well, hey, I love Dave's content, but his delivery sounds so condescending. See, the problem is, is that I don't really buy most of his content. Like, test-driven development is great when you have a black box. Way better version of development is this, is that you build something, you throw that something away, you learn from it, you throw it away, and then you build it again, and you make tests that are effective, right? That's how I like building. I don't like testing to determine my architecture, but I like to make it a very, um, I like to make it a very uh, uh, a concrete or foundational part of my development, right? Uh, that's why, again, that's why uh, Harpoon 2, Harpoon 1, pretty much no tests. I was exploring. I was just trying to understand what I was trying to build. Harpoon 2, yeah, it's going to be good. We got everything working. I really made sure that we had some good tests so I wasn't just me making shit up. You know what I mean? But I really like test build once. And notice that I threw away all of Harpoon. I did not even look at it once because once you start, no, unit testing is not bullshit. There's plenty of great reasons to unit test. Whenever I hear unit testing is bullshit, what I think you are is a crud slash UI developer and that's it. You've never developed anything hard. Get wrecked. Shambles. Right when you say unit testing is not uh, is not difficult, you've clearly never done really complex dynamic algorithms, right? Dynamic programming is not easy, and it's very good to have testing for that. Pseudo apt install get get it wrecked. Yeah, one hundred percent coverage is shit. Absolutely, hands down, absolutely. I know you get wrecked, kid. No real talk. Like unit testing, unit testing makes no sense. When people say it's like, ah, oh, you absolutely don't need to do that. Um, you can't refactor untested code. Uh, you're just moving shit around. But yeah, but but unit tests when you refactor code naturally, a bunch of them break. Also, all right. Uh, I do like stable API testing. I think it's really really good to do stable API testing. The hard part is that you don't test it for if conditions you know secretly inside of your code. Right, You have to treat it like a black box. But unit testing can be very, 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 very beneficial if and only if you have something that's a very constrained algorithm. Here's a good example. Um, if I had to go and build, uh, like here, this is from Netflix. This is something I've had to do at Netflix. I had to build a video sync player that would take in video frames as quickly as possible and pretend to play them and check for dropped frames and how dropped frames would affect everything and like built an infrastructure to high play uh, video like at 12, 15 X normal speed as fast as possible and test for any, any problems in, within the pipeline. And guess what? That, like, moving and playing videos, there was even nanoseconds that would spill out. Nanoseconds caused, uh, caused uh, uh, like, drift. And so, like, that's how hard those things were. I know I saw that, Tiffia. Um, and so that was, like, a real, real thing. What data structure did I use? Uh, dynamic programming. It was just a dynamic programming problem. I kept track of everything and had, I kept a spill. I had to keep track of spill from nanoseconds. It was super fun, but I had to create unit tests for that because it was extremely hard to get right. And it was extremely hard to actually test because if I wanted to test it, I had to like launch Netflix, run my program to start shoving things through and then make sure that my sync was doing the right thing. And it was getting like, you know, you would get how many thousands upon thousands of 10,000 frames. And so it's like, how could you ever do that in any real sense? Unit test it. It makes a thousand times more sense. I use unit test as a way to drive correctness and to implement stuff because it's fast. You know what I mean? It's fast and easy to do. I don't use unit test to ensure, like, it, I don't look at unit test as a way for, like, safety. I use it as a way to drive features through, right? At my work, a merge request gets auto-rejected if there's no test attached. Yeah, see, I think that's wrong, too. I think that that's also equally wrong. I only manually test while drinking my milk. Damn. I also watch Netflix at 20 to 30 speed. It's actually really hard to play video every single frame at 20, 20 X. Like that's a really hard problem. If you're playing, like say you're at 60 frames a second video, 50 frames a second audio, that's 110 frames per second. So 20 X, you know, that's 2200 frames that you have to shove through. Like it's actually extremely difficult. That's why when you fast forward, it's chunky, right? They kind of, you have to swim. You have to like go to the next, chunk and that's why whenever you hit a play sometimes there's a pause because you know if you have a bunch of videos sent down you have to like fast forward correctly through it, like grabbing you know these iframes and ensuring the gops right you have to get the gops all correct it's very very difficult 
All right, I think one of the uh, main problems of, with unit test, unity testing, okay, well, cl calm down, is that folks don't suggest to remove uh, some code in, uh, in the code reviews uh, because more tests equals good. I do agree with this take. I like this take actually quite a bit. Eventually, you can get to a state where you have so many tests that they are difficult to maintain and break at every single uh, character uh, change you make. Yeah, absolutely. There's some, the problem is, is that when you get too low on your unit testing, you reach a point where when you change even small interfaces, things are just breaking all over the place. You gotta be careful about exactly where you have your units and what things you think you're testing. I try to really, uh, hold on, sorry, this is just absurd. Okay, that's it, we're putting them on the big board. You're getting on blast, buddy. I hope you, I hope you, got, I hope you got some good messages behind you. Okay, you're lucky. You're lucky you have good chat history, okay? You're lucky you have good chat history. You almost just got kicked right out of the startup, buddy. Easy for you to say when you have Teach ghost coding for your unit test. Yeah, absolutely. Test coverage is great for testing if your test if your test executed. <laughs> yeah. How dare you challenge a Netflix engineer? No, it's just stupid to say you can do anything in some small a small period of time. It's it's a very complicated feature. I hate manual testing. It slows uh, down so so much. Yes, I miss the things. I'll, uh, let's see, and I miss things a lot. But if I'm testing the public interfaces with unit or integration test, then it usually catches the things I forgot about. Had this happen recently? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I mean, this is why. I, that's why I love driving implementation via uh, tests because I just think it's easier. Like while I was developing Harpoon over the charity stream, I actually finally just was. I got pissed off because I kept launching. Making Harpoon, launching a Vim instance, closing it down, reopening it, having the new Harpoon, requiring it in, trying to do the operation. I was like, okay, dude, this is just ridiculous. You know what I need to do? I just need to be able to go like this, right? I need to be able to just take a test, create a file, create a buffer, take my file, sync it, expect, the, expect it to be there, right? Like, I can't, dude, crazy to be able to think about anything else, right? It's just crazy. I love driving uh, implementation by that. It's very, very good. Wait, are you uh, not a public interface to chat Jibbity, uh Google? $5 a month? What is this? Don't write bugs. No need for testing. Yeah, that's fair. What is Harpoon? The greatest thing ever since NetBeans. All right, uh, let's, let's keep on going. I like that little chat, though. That was a good chat. Before I end this, does anyone have a hardline stance hating unit tests? All right, why? Can someone give me a reason why you have a hardline hate unit tests? And how much of your hating unit tests is because Theo says so? This is fine. Okay, so I love this take right here. When I'm figuring out a product, I don't want to maintain them uh, while I discover and play around. Perfectly fair. Uh, absolutely same team. Absolutely same team. Absolutely. Yeah, okay, this is also fair. I, I, I struggle with that too, right? What is worth testing versus what is not worth testing? What if I, uh, what if I have a different? I don't have a unit test. Okay, uh, I hate that they imply and somehow... Okay, first off, you got to take another spin at English. Spyro, I know you better than this. I know you can type properly. Whatever you just said there was confusing. Uh, you know the most about the problem you are trying to solve after you've solved it. Exactly. That's why I do like the write it once and throw it away. I do like the write it once, throw it away approach. I need to test everything because I have a hard time to decide where to draw the line. See, I, I think that that is also bad, right? You're, I think you're going to end up reaching kind of like these these shitty places where you have too many tests and they just don't make sense. And when you need to make a change because you didn't really know your product, you like ruin half your tests. You really have to, I, I, I think the thing is, is that I think why most people don't like unit tests is because they've been forced to write unit tests for everything. And because you're forced to write unit tests, you end up writing a bunch of stupid ass unit tests. For personal projects, do you suggest writing unit tests? Not right away, and it depends. Again, always, it, dude, this is such a huge depends. If you're just doing like a CRUD app, you probably don't have to worry about it. Real talk, do you have to worry about it? If you're just building a little website to do something, you don't have to worry about it. Here's something that I'm about to do. My next project in Vim after I finish off Harpoon 2 is going to be APM. There is no way for you to listen to Vim motions and know what motion was just executed. That means I have to see the incoming stream of keys and determine what is the state of Vim. Are we in insert mode? Are we in visual mode? Are we in uh, whatever blah, blah, blah mode? Therefore, when keys are executed, I have to like discover the motion you are creating. Do you realize how difficult that would be to create without unit tests? That is a very simple and obvious thing you're gonna wanna unit test. The engine to capture keys and to correctly identify, that is like a black box of all time. It is literally just like, here is a black box, here's a string of keys, what happened? Output better be this, input better be this. This is like perfect. 
black box this i mean this is unit testing to a t what is good because to, to a to make that correct is really really hard b to test it is really really hard manually testing that would be a nightmare and c since the input and the output will be known it is super 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 simple you know what i mean so that's kind of how i look at it Right, Winchester. Winchester usually has some pretty good takes in here. Uh, Tad, testing after development. I'm a big fan of testing after development. Uh, Jordan, I think I answered yours. Like I, to me, it's just like find a problem that you can make that makes sense to test. Like that is uh, to me, that's obvious. Um, it's obvious that you'd want to unit test it. I have a different take. I hate what unit tests imply, and they are easy to manage poorly. Yes, agreed. Uh, I usually give most focus on integration tests, and if there's a function that is a bit expensive slash complex, I do develop a unit test. I don't write tests uh, while I let's see while I just test it. Let's see, hold on. I don't write tests while I just testing and trying to understand how to build something. Sometimes I need to build something to know if it's the correct way. Yes, I will even if I if if I'm stuck on something that's hard, I will write a unit test. For me, unit test is that is is driving that really annoying part of development where you have to try to like launch programs and like different things at once to know that you're doing it correct. So for me, it's like, if I can cut that time from 20 seconds plus context shifting to, to 20 milliseconds, absolute win every single time. Even if it takes me an hour, that, that amount of like not having to do that cycle saves so much time. It just saves so much time. Force test coverage is usually accompanied with really bad tests. Absolutely. Absolutely. So this is where I think, I think this is where all the hate of unit tests really come from is people are forced to write unit tests. I think it's 100% the case is that if you're not forced to write unit tests, you will write them for what makes sense for you. Those cycle, yeah, those cycles need to be shared. Exactly. Exactly. Cause then you, then, then, then you get that, you get that multiplier effect build fails. Yeah. Uh, and some domains you're, uh, you, uh, you're forced to have 100%. Yeah. It's not real though. I always give here. Here's a really simple example of why that's fake. Okay. We're going to write some Lua for a second. Okay. I'm going to write it in TypeScript, even though I'm in a Lua file, because it just makes more sense. All right. Const foo equals this. All right. Um, let's see. Add. Right. It's going to take in an R. Right. That's a number array. And it's going to return R. Um, let's see. R uh, zero plus R one. And it's going to return a number. Right. I can easily get 100% on this and I would not have tested NAN, right? Like, how simple is that to test NAN, right? Boom, 100% test coverage, oh shit! Right, like, is it even real? Right, that's the problem about 100% test coverage is it's not real, you know what I mean? It's not real. That's why 100 test, 100% test coverage is not inherently more safe than 80%. Property-based uh, testing, it can be annoying. I mean, it's no different than interface-based testing. When you have to refactor something, if you don't have a proper interface, if you don't have a stable interface, it, it's just as annoying, right? Yeah. I agree with this. The biggest issue I see is developers not leveraging other types of tests, e.g. integration, ETU. Yeah, I do like I do like integration, but they can be really hard to set up too. You know? So you also, I mean, integration, and it depends. Like, end-to-end -end tests can also fail sporadically depending on how big your client is and how many services you're using. Is it all? And then you also have this entire, there's a lot of complications with end-to-end -end that aren't often talked about. Like, another big thing is, let's say you have an end-to-end -end test and you need it to run in staging. You also have to have all your microservices that you're using potentially in staging as well. That adds like a whole nother layer of complexity. You know what I mean? It's, it, it's just, it's not simple, right? It's not easy. ETE can, uh, ETE can be very difficult. So I, I, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't fully support any one of those, but I do like the idea of them all if that makes sense. Integration tests take a uh, long AF to write. Yeah, they can be very, very difficult. Uh, so you don't want to overdo integration testing. You want to try to minimize that. Should the target be 80%? I, the target should be no percent. If you think there's a percent that makes sense, you're not doing it right. I love this song, by the way. All right, people, that's enough of that. 
This is good. Hey, this is a good talk about unit testing. Good talk. Good talk. I liked your guys' questions. Okay? I liked your guys' thoughts. Like and subscribe. These nuts. Oh, got him. A gen. <laughs> the name is the P unit of gen.